Okay, you're live, ladies. All right. Good morning, Good morning. everyone. Wave to the camera. <laughs> okay, this is new for me, so I'm trying to figure it out too. You'll, you'll, she's, yeah, yeah. She's, she's, you'll talk to us. She'll move around. Yeah, she's she'll gonna, move around. Because we simulcast, this mm -hmm. is the Outlaw Studio. That's Z93. She flips the switch in there. Awesome. And then, because then we switch over straight up at 9. Good. So, then she comes back and she moves the camera around. We had an update on Facebook or something. Because it's I'm like, my... Hi, Dad. Hi, Ace. <laughs> Pops up. I can see who's watching. <laughs> That's, a, that's our communication. Hey, Dad. I'm, I know he's there. I'm afraid to look at mine. There's no telling me to pop up on mine. I'm not looking at it. Did you mess with things in here? I, I haven't touched anything. It was even on time because I added extra stuff last night. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Robert. Is that from Chicago. Watching now? Yeah. It's a family reunion. <laughs> Well, that's kind of what it's kind of what Facebook does, right? It is. It is. <laughs> it's kind of how you do it. You get all your friends and family, and you get, at least keep in touch that way. Well, you could pull it up and share it. That way, people, your friends can watch. Yeah. Share, 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 everyone. I will share. Hold on. You know, I'm not very good at technology, right? It takes me a while to do you, things. You manage just fine. Getting the hang of it. <laughs> Here it is. All right. Well, I'm sharing. Awesome. Here we go. <laughs> All right, you ready, Jen? Yep. Welcome to Today and You. I'm Jennifer Blackwell. And I'm Teresa Strong. We are here live on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and on Facebook Live. If you are watching us, you can see us on my page. I also shared it on the station page if you'd prefer to watch it over there. So several different ways for you to follow along with the show and have your voice heard if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, comments. You just want to send a cute emoji. You can do that, too, on social media. <laughs> yes. If you're not watching on Facebook Live, you're definitely missing out. You get a behind-the-scenes of what goes on when Z93, Outlaw Country, and MonsterMediaYuma.com all go to commercial break. We stay live for the entire hour. We love all of our Facebook Live viewers. You get to interact. Like Jen said, you know, if you have a question or comment for any of our guests or a comment about any of the topics that we're talking about, we love to read them aloud on air. Or you can always call the station. You can call at 928-782. Four, three, two, one. Now we do have a contest right off the bat here. We are giving away an oil change from FTS Automotive, valued at up to thirty-four ninety-five. That's a great deal. All you need to do is text the keyword FTS, as in Franklin Tire Service, to nine two eight three four three zero nine nine three. We will give you until eleven a.m. today, so you have about an hour after the show ends. Yes, you can text as often as you like. Remember, please text responsibly, hands-free in the city of Yuma, and standard text rates do apply so make sure you are familiar with the type of plan that you have yeah and we will draw one winner at random for that FTS gift certificate yeah if you haven't figured it out that's that uh, monster message line is something you're gonna want to save in your phone we do giveaways through the monster message line daily and throughout the week we have our taco Tuesday entry all you have to do is text the word taco and we will be drawing a winner for that next week and I do mute that in when I'm in my office yes. otherwise it goes blip 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 I heard it. I heard a it. Lot. When, I heard it yesterday when our internet came back up. I was like, "Oh yeah, internet's definitely working." Jen's email. You can hear her email go up, and you can hear the monster message line. So, but yes, definitely something you want to program into your phone because that's where all the giveaways happen. I see Roberto is watching from Chicago. So good morning. Yes, from, from good the morning. Windy City. You can keep your wins too because we have the 27th annual Colorado River Crossing Balloon Festival. Kicking off tomorrow. Wait, no. What's today? Today's, Today's Wednesday. Wednesday. Friday. Friday. <laughs> you know, they're already starting to uh, kind of practice, I guess, because this morning on the way to taking, uh, dropping off Eli, there was the, I believe it was the Curtin's hot air balloon. They were getting ready to go up, and it's nice and calm this morning, so it's a perfect day for them to get out and, and do that. So they're, they're getting ready. Well, we have a special guest with us in the studio today. We have yes. Leanne Worthen. Thank you so much. Well, no, morning. thank you for having me. It's yeah. been a long while, hasn't it? <laughs> it yes. Has. You know, we're, we're mixing up the formula a little bit this morning. Sarah Wisdom usually joins us from the mm -hmm. Yuma County Library. She is traveling, I thought she said to Texas, but mm -hmm. some um, her the arrangements were made for yeah. an earlier flight, so she's not going to be here. But she did send us a little information about something exciting that they have coming up. I, I love history and I love mm -hmm. human history. So this really, really sounds like a lot of fun. They're having an event tomorrow, the 16th at 1 p.m. at the Heritage Library. 
and then the 21st at the Somerton Library. And it's about Married in Yuma, the wedding chapel era. Yeah. And some of you may have seen the stories about the different things that would take place. And there were competing wedding chapels that, that never closed. They were open 24-7 because people would come from California and get married over here. You had a lot of celebrities. I was going to say, there was a lot of celebrities that like went through like the Lutz Chapel and things, and I've heard quite a few stories about them coming to Yuma. So back in the, back in the old days, we had a lot of people coming through just to get married. They were, and I guess the, the wedding chapel era was known as 1928 to 1956. So that's a, a pretty broad range of dates there. But if you attend these different events at the libraries, you can learn about one of the most colorful chapters of Yuma's history, the No Waiting Era is what it was known wow. as. Wow. When Cupid worked overtime to marry thousands of couples each year, and there's no charge to attend either of these events at the Heritage or the Summerton Library. That'll, so. be, that'll be super cool. I, and the fact that they're having it at the original Heritage Library, I think, is just kind of fitting for it. All right, now with Leanne here in the studio today, we're going to talk about a variety of things. Yes. But one of the things we definitely want to mention is that you recently spent some time, you know, we, we had a horrible hurricane season, one of the worst, I, th I think, in uh, U.S. history. And you had the opportunity to volunteer your time in Texas. You know, I took a, I took a break for a while, kind of low-key with mm -hmm. retirement. I took a break, and then... I heard about Team Rubicon through um, a friend of ours, and I, you know what, it just, it, it got my attention. You know how sometimes when you're looking at donate, uh, you know, your money for a hurricane or for a, a disaster, I thought, you know, I could give them my $20 or maybe I could give them my time. That's awesome. And, and that's kind of what struck me was I, ha I can give that $20 or I can go give a whole lot more time, which is going to be a whole lot more valuable. So I, I re went ahead and registered. And within a couple of weeks, I was on my way to Beaumont, Texas. And how did you register? Where did you know to go to register? You know, when you go to Team Rubicon's, uh, their Facebook page, or you go to their um, dot .com, uh, teamrubicon.com, they have everything there. It tells you how to register. And it you have to do some things, though. I mean, they're, they vet you pretty well. You've got to do a background check. You've got to do some training. And then you can go and you can do a deployment. So uh, it, it's actually one of those things in your life where you just get to jump in and go do something. You don't have to be an expert in disaster to go help. And that's the thing that appealed to me as well, is that you can do so many different things. And it's amazing. They say that everybody has a place. And you know, they did. I've seen, I mean, there's an 84 year old man that was out there. And you know, there is always a place. There's technology, there's boots on the ground, meaning people that go out and do the mucking of the homes, tear them down, demo them, heavy equipment operators, chainsaws, I mean, you name it. I spend a lot of time just pulling out nails. Oh, wow. Just do it. Well, it's tedious stuff well, it's like tedious. that, but it has to be done. It, it's tedious, and, 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 and it's one of those things that has to be done. And if you were paying somebody to do that, the labor, that would be time-consuming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of these people are, are, were still kind of like in you know, shock. They were still looking at their belongings on a street corner. Their lives. And don't get me wrong, they were very, 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 very thankful they were alive. But still, that's, you know, people say, oh, it's just possessions. Yeah, it is. But some of that is your history. It is. It's your family history. It could be pictures. Yeah. It could be small items that were given to you by somebody that are very deeply important. And you know what? It ends up on a corner just that fast. Well, our, our guest with us today is Leanne Worthen. Now, Leanne, a lot of people know you've, you've, you've given a lifetime of service. You served in the United States Marine Corps. Yep. How many years? Ten. Ten years. Mm -hmm. And then you were with the Yuma Police Department for how long? Well, almost 20. Okay. You, you've done your time. <laughs> Missed it by a few months. You were on the other side of the bars, though, having, yes. having done the time. Yes. Oh, thank you for clarifying that. I don't want anybody in Yuma to think I got arrested at some point, especially since I've retired. Exactly. <laughs> well, since you have retired, you know, I love that you, you've always had it in you to give back, you know, but you were working before, raising a family, too. Right. There, there's a lot of work in that, but now that you have a little bit more time, you you can give where it's needed most and that's why I, I like that the I don't like that the hurricane happened but I like that the right. team Rubicon was a good fit for you it was a good fit for me and basically because it's a you know 70 percent of the volunteers in team Rubicon are veterans but it doesn't mean that you can't help if you're a civilian we have first responders in there we have people that it really the only requirement is that you are ready to jump into the you know they call it come into the arena go do it 
get out there and go help and go do it. And that's the importance of it because sometimes we wait and we think somebody else is going to do it. Why not it be you, you exactly. or me or whoever wants to help? And But you can't willy-nilly and go down and volunteer and then become part of the crisis. Exactly. So, so it's good to get with an organization. I mean, that's why you have the Red Cross. That's why you have Team Rubicon. That's why you have different agencies. And Team Rubicon is kind of, we do a lot of stuff that FEMA does as far as our structure. So that means that we can go out and effectively help, not become part of that ongoing crisis. And listen, Texas is going to be recovering for a long mm -hmm. time. Florida is still recovering. We've got Puerto Rico still going. We have... We had people in Mexico. We have people in small little towns that had tornadoes in Pennsylvania. I mean, honestly, it's anywhere and everywhere. And I, it's an amazing, it's an amazing feeling to have somebody look at you and go, thank you, because we just tore her house down. Exactly. And, it's and, closure and, for and this her. And this is a perfect example. You know, we, we talk about it all the time. You know, it's, we, we need volunteers even locally here for a lot of our nonprofits. And if you can't donate monetarily, your time is way more valuable. It you is. know, to get out there and to to make a difference in your instance, a huge difference in these people's lives. You're able to get like you said, there was a lot of people thinking they lost everything. But once you cleared things out, they're like, Okay, wait, there is hope out there for us. And you know what? It's what they gave me. Mm -hmm. I mean I, let me speak as frankly as I can about you know what? It's not about us. When you get there, it's about everything that they could need. And you know what? They took such fabulous care of us. Mm -hmm. We stayed in a Baptist church, Calvary Baptist Church in Beaumont. They closed their doors, and their parishioners became our caretakers. Oh, really? Wow. They fed us. They made sure we got food. They made sure that we had clean clothes. Listen, I wouldn't have touched my laundry. I wouldn't have my mom touch my laundry. It was so bad because we were so dirty and so grimy. And they did it with a had a blink of an eye and then you could the next morning your laundry would come back to you folded oh my goodness and nicely put together and there's people these are people in the community who who, who were already devastated so yes. and lost stuff and they gave they brought in showers for us to have showers to get clean and i mean that's i mean some places don't have that capability some places you're sleeping in a tent and you're like cleaning yourself with you know whatever you can find but honestly this is what i mean about it was about what they gave to us mm -hmm. more than we'll ever have given to them. Oh, I couldn't believe how those communities pull together. One of the things right after, especially Harvey, happened because of the proximity to us here in the Yuma community. It's just a state of, you know, well, a couple states away. But people wanted to rush and jump in their cars and go help. But that's why I like that Team Rubicon has the, it's got the organization behind it. Correct. And there, there's an orchestration to things and the way they need to be done. Again, so you're not adding to the problem. And other people were saying, oh, please, put themselves in danger. Exactly. Please wait. You know, at that point, it was like the very early stages. They weren't really sure of all the, the true disaster that had occurred. Well, and you can't necessarily get what people need until they have a chance to get through the initial assess part of the disaster. Yeah. You right. have to assess that. So we, I mean, that's kind of what we do. We do damage assessment. You can do it all on phone, by the phone. We have remote operations where we have people that man phones and help people. You, they get on the phone, they call you, and you, they tell you what they need. So you're already conducting damage assessments. Wow, has emergency management changed over the last 10 years? Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. But you can do that on, on the phone and help these people get started faster and quicker. But you can't, right, I wanted to jump in the car too, but then I went, oh, that, that, that's not going to help anything. Who do I go jump in the car and go, who do I who do I go to? And the community had, there's different churches. We had an Amish group that came in that, that provided hot meals for people in Beaumont wow. for weeks. Oh, wow. That, that's tremendous. For weeks. And they were still, I mean, these people were still, have, they had tents in their backyard that they were sleeping in. And then when I went back the second time and I went to Rockport, Texas, which is, they had, it was a lot of wind damage. And I believe they were like right at pretty much ground zero for the landing of the hurricane. And, you know, it was the same thing, that the mayor of a small town in Texas came in every morning and made us eggs to order. Wow. Oh. They just couldn't say thank you enough for what you guys were doing Exactly. To help. So here's this, you know, here's this mayor of this small town, and he's like, he's cooking. He's like, do you want an omelet? D that doesn't seem like much, but when you're, in, you know, it's huge it to have a warm, hot meal and well taken care of, well provided. Leanne Worthen is with us today, and Leanne, you've lived, how long have you lived in the Yuma community? I, you know, I moved here in the spring of 93. Okay, so, so you've, been, you've been here, quite some time. that's around, I moved here February of 93. 
Yeah. So we've been here about the same amount of time. I know I, I would like to think if Yuma endured any type of horrific event like this, that our humans would step up too, because that's what we do. You know what? Humans step up all the time. Yeah. And if I know for a fact, and I can feel comfortable in saying that I have all the faith and confidence in this community, that if anything happened like that, earthquake, any major disaster, or just people in need, they're, they're there and they're going to be there. And I'm really hoping to gather some resources in Yuma to make sure that we have a team that, you know, to help locally. It's not just a matter of going out and helping just in other states. Just to be prepared. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? Yuma's always going to step up. I can say that wholeheartedly. I've been here for too long. I've seen too much, and I've been helped. I don't even know how many times they've helped me. It, it's a wonderful so, community. Yeah. Well, we are, we're going to take a quick break here. We will return with Leanne Worthen with more here on Today in Yuma on Z93. Outlaw Country, monstermediayuma.com. The show's brought to you by Classic Accounting. Let them take the stress out of doing your business and payroll taxes. They are locally owned and operated, and they have been since 1986. Schedule your business consultation today at 343-1040. And Sprague Sports is home of Yuma's only indoor shooting range, and they're your hunting and shooting headquarters. I know they're probably super busy right now. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's or uh, at Sprague's.com. And quick refrigeration, they are also family owned and operated, and they've been heating and cooling the Yuma area since 1955. Visit GetCoolQuick.com for more details. And Advocate Pest and Wildlife Services offered, offers wildlife control like feral cat trapping, snake and skunk relocation, and pigeon extraction. You can give them a call today at 928-343-9149 or message them on Facebook. We'll be back with Today in Yuma after this. Was it Louie? Is that who you saw in there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How much of a break do you guys take? Uh, three, three and a half minutes. Two and a half, two and a half three minutes. Breathe. <laughs> I know, it seems darker. Because <laughs> we have the... Is it because all the blinds are shut? Because the, sun, the sun's bad on the recording. Yeah. Hey, I need some skunk relocation. Them people need to get over in my neighborhood. Really? <laughs> my dog's been skunked twice. Are you serious? <gasps> <gasps> We finally had to put some bricks underneath of our fence because the little babies were coming underneath. And he he went out the doggy door to go potty one night, and he ran into that little skunk, and that skunk sprayed him for everything he was worth. Oh. So oh, the dog goodness. comes walking through the doggy door into the house. <laughs> say, how do you get that smell off? Tomato? Lots tomato, of, tomato? No, no, no. not really. <laughs> um, lots of uh, vinegar and water, and then, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it, Murphy's Oil. Really? So, really? Yeah. So, so that, I mean, that was it. We had to wash every piece of clothing we had, because when he walked in, he walked into our bedroom. Oh. And then he walked out, and I was asleep, and I was like, I was looking around, and I was like, okay, what is that horrible smell like oh. oil? And it was him, and he's like this. Because it got it right this way. Was it oh. Leo or your other It was other Leo. Dog? It was Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Bonner. B O H N E R. Oh, yeah. She says hi, Dad. Oh, yeah. Ashley's cool. <laughs> <laughs> She's from her son Tatum and my son are like this. But oh, are they? Yeah. That's funny. Let's face it. Nobody likes to be taxed. I'm getting skunked. Oh, there's. Oh. I, when I come down County 14 in the morning. And there's at least two dead ones every morning. Because they run between all the fields and everything. Yeah. yeah. Of course, I was going down 8th Street yesterday, and I did the... She had oh. it. Oh. <laughs> Janet yeah. Sock just says, what's up, Sergeant? <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, what is this yeah. big announcement what, you have? Big secret yeah, I know. This is, I think she's just doing it to mess with I people. think she is. Oh, what? what? I don't know. I we don't know. She, she has some big teaser and says, I'll be announcing later or something. Janet? So, yeah. Yes. So everyone's speculating. Can you command her to do something? Can you come back to <laughs> Janet, come now. I might, might be able to command her. She might still listen to me. I don't know. I was never really her boss. She's so funny. Well, it was funny because she had just posted, like, when she did one of those tests where it said, like, uh, when it predicts when you're going to get married. It literally said the next day. Oh. <laughs> so everybody was like, oh, did we miss something here? So oh, yeah. are you getting married? Yeah. <laughs> Big, funny, smiley face there. Yeah, I think she's just doing it to mess with people. She might be, because she's, she's like, like yes, she's, ma'am. She's up to shenanigans. And Kara McIntosh says, hi, Leanne, we love you in Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah, she's <laughs> my, I've known her since we were like 15, no, 
younger than that, like 13. Really? 13 wow. years old, 12 and 13. Now, where, were, where were you born? I was born in Oregon. Okay. Traveled, moved to L.A., and then after L.A., we went south. Oh, we back on? after this? No, she's, she's still fine. waiting. She's still she waiting. For to get to married? <laughs> Is there a special someone, or do we need to do a contest? Tell Janet to get oh! oh! Let's just make sure it's a Diamondbacks fan, though. <laughs> contest. All right, we ready? Yeah, that's hilarious. Welcome back to Today and You. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We are here live on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and on Facebook Live, courtesy of FTS Automotive. Yes. Now, my husband did have to text me because I say the key word is FTS, and I will say Franklin's Tire Service, just so people realize the letters. Yeah. I could get into the specific alphas, but I don't want to confuse people. He said, I believe it's Franklin Tire and Suspension. Okay, FTS, whatever it takes for you to remember those three letters. No emojis, no punctuation for you to get the proper vowel back. Yes, honey, thank you. I love you. Hey, at least we know he's listening. He is. He is. And you cannot win either. <laughs> All right, Leanne Worthen is with us today. I, you know, I, I keep, I'm afraid I'm going to say Lori Franklin because Lori came in after you did. And as the public information officer for YPD, but I, it's okay. I called her Leanne for at least two months after, after you know, she came it's in. It's the whole L, L thing, you know? We should, have, we should have picked somebody that didn't have L for the first name. <laughs> All right. Now, we've been talking about your volunteering with Team Rubicon uh, for the areas affected by Hurricane Harvey. Now, this does tie in. There's a volunteer expo coming up tomorrow, and I want to remind the community about it. Arizona at Work, Yuma County is holding this expo, and they will have so many different organizations there. If someone is wanting to find a way to give back, but they might not be sure about all the available opportunities, it's kind of like one-stop shopping to find one that would be a great fit for you, for mm -hmm. your, your time, your abilities, your personality, because everything is different. It's from 1.30 to 4 tomorrow at the Martin Luther King Youth Center at 300 South 13th Avenue. And again, there will be num numerous organizations with information about how you can become a volunteer. Now, Leanne, we are going to talk, you are affiliated with 78 Crime, you're on the board. Right, you know, I, I always had a, a, I don't know, just a connection to 78 Crime, not just being a police officer, but I, I just enjoyed um, the board, I enjoyed that, that there are citizens, everyday citizens who want to make a change. And I always, always, always wanted people to understand how that organization is run and, and how it is not a, a police department kind of a paid thing. Mm -hmm. It is people who donate to 78 Crimes, so 78 Crimes can go out and help, you know, solve crimes, help the police, our media partners, everybody that partners together in the community for 78 Crimes. So you know what? I just stayed. I don't know if they wanted me to stay, <laughs> but I stayed. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. You know, retirement for two years and I'm still lingering around somehow, you know, but I think it's important and it's one of those things, again, that I think I think they're just a, an amazing group of people, and we're always looking for board members that want to come out and do 78 Crime and, and be involved with, you know, helping their community, because people do need another way to report crime, and that's that's another tool, and the more tools, the better. I'm sure Lori Franklin or anybody else in the police department will tell you that the, that tool of people calling in and giving us information is valuable. It is very, very valuable. valuable. Is that strictly volunteers? We are a volunteer board. Wow. So there is not a, there's not, it's, it resides in the police department only because that's where our, you know, where the phone line is. But honestly. Well, and it's a necessity. I mean, you're calling mm -hmm. re regarding uh, an active case or things like that. It's, it, I mean, it's only fitting that it's. But it's Yuma, department. but it's Yuma County. Yes, you know, and that's Yuma what County. I tell you. It's all of Yuma County. And people always forgot that they, you know, they connect to the city because they connected to me talking about it. But honestly, it is a Yuma County thing. And so crimes can be solved all over the place. We get calls, you know, that solve in different communities and we can pass that on to different 78 crime or crime stoppers organizations to solve crimes in different areas. So it's an amazing tool and it's very valuable and very important to me still. One of the things that I've noticed in the number of years that I've been doing this also is I meet with a bunch of different nonprofits, Leanne, and they talk about the need for volunteers because a lot of the longtime volunteers they're, they're tired. They're ready to move on. <laughs> and, and they have some of the organizations have volunteers that are in their late 80s even, but they're so passionate about it. But they're wanting to look at recruiting, you know, a new to batch take, of people. Yeah, to take to, their places. Yes, to come up in the ranks. Well, and I think you should. I think, I mean, we have an, a valuable, valuable resource in our youth. And they don't, I mean, if they haven't volunteered when they were young, then get them to volunteer when they're young. 
there are certain organizations that have certain age requirements, but you know, you, you're a young high school kid, you're a young college student, go out and do some service. We had a guy at Team Rubicon who just, he, he's taken a whole year off, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to volunteer for a year. For a, a year. Oh, for a whole year. That's impressive. Now, not everybody can do that. Don't get me wrong. I don't, I'm not, I don't live in fantasy land, and I know it's hard sometimes to manage work and school and but volunteering is, and that feeling of giving back is probably one of the most vital, I think, things that put us together as a member of the world. It is. Not just your neighborhood or your country or your state or city. It puts you together with the rest of the people in the world, and I think that's a valuable, valuable experience. Right. No, you're exactly right. And another, uh, we have an event coming up. It's the three days of Thanksgiving next week mm -hmm. with Crossroads Mission. They've been doing this for a number of years, and we, we spoke with Barbara Rochester and other representatives they need so many volunteers to put this on, and it could be any little thing. You could be passing out water bottles or juices or anything, you know, right. coats and socks to the individuals that come in. We're, we're coming up on some cooler weather here, and we know we, we've had, you know, a, a miserable summer, and, you know, we're thankful for the weather, but for those who don't have a roof over their head, you know, it's it's scary. Well, the elements take their toll. Yes. I mean, it, it, whatever the weather is, it doesn't seem like it's too cold. But when you you're right, when you're out there, you know, living in, in, in wherever you happen to be, it doesn't have a roof over your head. You're going to get there's going to be issues. You know, I tell people all the time about volunteering. It's like I can't say that I ran right out and volunteered right away because I, I needed to kind of, you know, take a look at my life and see where I was and, you know, be more involved with my son's school and all the things that you do when you have a young family. But you really, really, really got to think about the bigger picture, and I think that's important. So, yeah, volunteer. I, I'm, I'm glad that Jen had brought up the, the mission because I know just the other day they had one of their we had Barbara in, and she was talking about their their annual turkey drive that they do. And I don't think that they hit their goal this year, um, but there is another food drive going on today at the Walmart um, called the Foothills. I know Jennifer doesn't want to admit. 32nd Street. 32nd Street. Eight, Street. Or eight and a half. Eight, that, that is from noon until six today. Yes. And it doesn't have to be turkeys. I know a, tur a turkey can be a, a pretty sizable expense if you're looking at, you know, getting another one. But it can be a can of cranberries, a box of stuffing for a dollar, anything like that. Yeah, and roast, anything like that. Because she's doing, you know, three different meals. That, I say she, but the, the mission is doing three different meals. You know, three days of, of Thanksgiving, then again, three days of Christmas. Right. And what, what they do collect now go towards the Christmas meals also. It's exactly. not just everything for the three days of Thanksgiving. So we're stretching out six different meals in excess of 1,200 meals per day. Plus, they also deliver to homebound mm -hmm. the, the individuals that are, and the elderly who are not able to make it. Well, here's what I think happens sometimes. I think sometimes we go, you know what, somebody else is going to do that. You know, you be that somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. And take that moment and time to understand mm -hmm. that maybe you're when you're giving a turkey or you're helping put on... Helping with one of those bigger events where you need to have your volunteer staff to, to do something as simple as a water bottle. It's not about the glory. And it's not about what you think you're doing because you have no idea how that might affect somebody way down the road and right. different numbers of people. So I always think, you know, if you think bigger picture and not little picture where you get you get into, you know, I think, some, I think somebody else is going to go to the turkey drive or I think somebody else is going to donate their time. That's where I just decided to step up and yep. step in. You so, be the change. I think that's, how, that's how things start. They start with us. And my son was asking last week, because in years past, we you know we volunteered at Crossroads. I remember last year it was a little on the breezy side, but they yeah. made it work, too. They had the canopies out there. We were serving and taking care of everything. And he said, or, when are we leaving? Because he and I, my husband has to work. So Jason and I are going to head to Safford and visit family for the holiday. And I said, we're, we're leaving Wednesday sometime. He said, okay. He said, so can I go and volunteer on Tuesday? I said, yes, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And I said, you know what, though? They also need a lot of desserts. And I told him pies and brownies. I said, and he loves to make brownies. That's been his project since he was about four. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> He's the household brownie maker. So we, we have the balloon festival and other events on Saturday and Sunday. I think it's going to be brownie baking day at the Blackwells. Well, that would, oh, maybe so, I need to go B -B -B. to the Blackwells. <laughs> brownie baking B -B -B. Day. I need to go the to Blackwells. Blackwells. <laughs> Some brownies. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you are curious, Crossroads will be doing the three days next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, each day from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. And uh, just a few quick minutes here with Leanne today. We want to talk about getting to know our neighbors. You know, times have changed a lot, and I think it's so important. I'm, I'm friends with several of my neighbors, but there's still some I don't know, and, and I feel bad about that. 
right? I keep hearing over and over again, you know, too bad that people have to help during a time of disaster. Uh, not too bad. That's great. But it's also something that I think we need to do um, in our own neighborhoods. Well, I think I know that Yuma would step up, and I do believe they would step up to help anybody. The thing that we've gotten away from is that that human contact, mm -hmm. you know? I'm sorry, I love the phone, but put it down. Go knock on your neighbor's door. And people always say, well, you know, I'm scared of my neighbor, or I don't know my neighbor, or how do I know who my Change neighbor is? Change that. Me Change too. it. Find yeah. out. And if they're not a good neighbor, don't go back. Yeah. But my, my point is, is re really just a simple phone call, because when disaster hits, you might, you might need to know. The first house we went to, the firefighter, he had to go help his, his elderly neighbor because they just weren't expecting to have to leave. They weren't expecting more than 6 to 12 inches of water, right. and it was up to 6 foot high. Oh, my wow. goodness. So people were, like, people were going to that neighborhood to stay safe, and they were h hanging out with their friends in, the, in that neighborhood thinking that they would be okay. Well, guess what? They became... It became a bigger crisis, and it became now you've got more people who needed help. Mm -hmm. But he knew in the back of his mind that that neighbor lived by himself. And so he went over and he carried him out of his home. Oh, that's awesome. But, but if you didn't know. If you didn't know he was there. How would you, I mean, well, how would you go help? Exactly. And honestly, I, I was kind of that way when I was at work. I didn't, I kind of like, oh, I do this, you know, for a living. I don't really want to engage anymore with the public. Well, you know what? I got up and started to engage. Mm -hmm. And engage in human contact, face-to-face. -face. Mm -hmm. How are you? It doesn't take much. It, doesn't. Yes. it really no, doesn't. No, you're right. And some neighbors, you know, you, you might want not want to go knock on the door. But, you know, just extend a hello. Mm -hmm. You know what? If you ever need me for anything, this is where I live. And I let people know that. And I think if we give back in a small, small number of ways... And then the larger picture develops on its own. It does. No, I think you're exactly I, right. I, I, we make it a point to try and get to know, you know, everybody, you know, at least a couple houses, you know, with on our neighborhood block. Not only, not only just so we know our neighbors, but we have our son too. And I want to be as much as. I, it's still hard for me to. I like to let him go out and play in the front yard, and and if I'm not out there, I can see him out the the you know the front window. But I know that my neighbors are outside, or I know my neighbors are keeping an eye. And if they see something out of the ordinary, they would be quick to step in or make sure I knew about it. Right. You know, it's just it, we have an, other kids down the road. I remember growing up and. The neighborhood kids that we, we're still friends to this day. Those are relationships that I, you know, I think are a necessity. But you, but you were, sitters. yeah, we're all the we were the fence sitters. We but sat you, on the fence. But you couldn't develop that though unless you got out and met them. Yeah, yes. exactly. You wouldn't know, like my friend Kara, who just got in touch with us on Facebook because she's listening to the show and watching the show. You know what? I'm still friends with her. I met her when we were like twelve, yeah. you know, thirteen, and I don't know that people are in that same environment anymore. Maybe they are. Get I those just, kids out to play with each other. Set, and get them off the tablet. Set the example. You know why I really got into Team Rubicon wasn't because I wanted to, to be some kind of a hero. I did it because I wanted my son to see me go yep. and help. And you know what he said to me? Can I go next year, Mommy? Aww. I saw the guys in the boat saving all those people. Do you think I could Aww. go do that? Wow. And he meant it. Uh -huh. He doesn't know what it's like. Unless you show him. Yep, yeah. such a you can talk part. all you want to. You know what I mean? But, but you if you're talk to talk, walk the walk. That's and I true. mean that sincerely. It's learned behavior, too. They see what we are doing. Yeah. They Absolutely. do. And there's no age too young to have them help start no. volunteering. Yeah. Probably not doing hurricane cleanup on, on the large <laughs> scale, but there's little things they could do as far as safety is in place. Right. There's a lot of things locally that your children can get involved in and that you can set the example by doing, like you said, you and your son. I mean, really, it becomes a family tradition of... You know what? I'm going to help during this, you know, this event, and then they go and they see what it's like to help other people. And there's nothing. I don't think there's anything that's more um, gratifying than helping out another human being. Absolutely. Well, Nico Santos also says hi. Oh my gosh, Nico! <laughs> He's Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, Nico. Yes, Nico. Hi. All right. Our, our guest with us today on today in Yuma is Leanne Wortham. We'll, we'll definitely have you back in more often now. Yes. Oh uh, well, yeah, you're always fun. Whenever you guys want. <laughs> I have a good time with you're you too. You're welcome anytime. All right. Anytime. Thank you. We have to thank take you. our Lotus Day Spot and Salon selfie with Leanne out in the courtyard so you can see her Team Rubicon shirt. Yes. Thank you so much for doing that. No the problem. show is brought to you by Classic Accounting. Tax season is coming. And they have over 30 years of tax experience. They are locally owned and operated, and they have been since 1986 with two locations to serve you. Call 343-1040.
and Sprague Sports is Yuma's hunting and shooting headquarters. Family owned and operated since 1956. You can find them on 32nd Street next to Lowe's or uh, at Sprague's.com. Stop by Quick Refrigeration on Fridays for free filter Friday. You can take your old air filter and they will give you a brand new standard one inch air filter for free. Stop by 190 West 10th Street. And Advocate Pest and Wildlife Services have been serving the Yuma area for over 20 years. They are licensed with the Arizona Game and Fish Department for safe, humane wildlife relocation. You can give them a call at 928-343-9149 or message them on Facebook. This is Today in Yuma. After the break, we'll be back with Louis Galaviz and Dania Castillo from the city of San Luis. We'll be back. Get our selfie camera ready to go. And by the way, my little boy looks really handsome in these pictures. He's so adorable. He looks really oh handsome. Oh How old is he now? Seven? Six. Six? six? Okay. Mm, he's six. Oh, clouds. Yay. Take advantage of it now. Take advantage of it now. Here, put everything down. Put it all down. Okay, what do we got to do? Get in the middle on it. These two wonderful women. Smile. Thank you for having me. Be a stranger. I won't be. I'm gonna go to Puerto Rico in a couple months. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, definitely. All right. All right. Thanks, Jen. Bye. Bye, guys. Puerto Rico next. You heard your name, Tanya Castillo. Yes, you're perfect. How are you doing? How are you doing? Nice to see you. See, Tanya's already. She's keeping the seat over there. She wants to hide over there now. She's in the corner. Yeah. Like, damn. She's a shotgun. <laughs> it's a better camera, camera angle over there. There you oh, go. Is that what it is? Yes. This is my I good side? After watching the first video, okay, next time I go, I'll take the, the <laughs> further <laughs> seat. That's the what I just scroll down so I can see the comments. I don't want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, as a photographer, I pick up on weird glares and stuff. I'm like, oh, no, no. But we're limited in here. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Very limited. And these lights don't help you. We have to have them so we can read. So oh, okay. that's why I'm like, oh, it's a little darker in here today. But well, I can still read. Daniel will talk about the tree line. Okay. The holiday light parade. And we'll talk about the mega yacht sale together. All righty. They're probably towards the uh, the middle of the, the packet, Terry. The packet. Yes. Yep. Have you guys ever done a mega yard sale or first? This is actually our third one. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Actually, Daniel has been in I have. The, the last two. Okay. We started just, you know, Yuma's done it and some of the other communities have done it. And, and uh, you know, people asked, hey, we should do one for our residents. And we thought, well, this year, you know, it's close to the holidays. That way they get some money. Extra, extra money, yeah. Extra cash That's for true. more gifts. That's right there around the corner of Main Street and Watsonja, so everybody Every, Everyone by. can see it. <laughs> everybody sees it. You. It's a perfect, yeah, yeah. yeah everybody's has like, always, what's that? Has it always been there? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's perfect location okay, because traffic there is always interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so between, between four and six right now, it's... I, my my office, crazy. my window sits out to the line. Oh, so you get a friend sit so, a so of it. <laughs> They'll call I, you? People will call me, hey, how's the line? Eh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's probably like down at Walmart right now. <laughs> I want to wait an hour. Yeah, too. yeah, you might want It's like the border wait times and yeah, the Louis just, corner the, wait times. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, we ready? Welcome back to Today in Yuma. I'm Jennifer. And I'm Teresa. We are live on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and on Facebook Live, courtesy of FTS. And thank you to the lovely Anita manning the camera for us today. Now, we want to thank Leanne Worthen so much for coming in. Always yes, great stories. And it I, is. she's just such a, 
a ball of cheer. She really is. She we really love her. is. We haven't seen her in a long time, so it was nice to have her here. And like we've said, she will she will not be a stranger. She will be on more often. That's right. Now, next up with us, we have Louis Galavis and Dania Castillo with the city of San Luis. And we have lots of stuff to talk about, folks. Good morning. Good morning. All right. It's great to have you both back in here now. It's it's Most the holiday season. It is. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dania, we're going to talk with you about the tree lighting. Yes. So, like you said, it's eight. that time of year again. Three, and three, four, to kick three. off the holiday season, the city of San Luis will be having three. its uh, third annual tree lighting ceremony. Yeah, and you need that's to make sure on you have Tuesday, the November okay. twenty eighth, starting at six p.m. You're welcome. So it's it's a free event for the entire family. We're gonna be having hot chocolate. We're gonna be serving cookies. Uh, you can come and meet Santa Claus, take pictures with with him, and uh, bring your entire family. We're also going to be having local performances uh, by the Gadsden Marching Band, and I think other dancing. Yeah, we have different dance groups coming up, and and of course we're going to be lighting our thirty foot uh, Christmas tree, which is always a sight. So. That's pretty big. Yeah, I think it's the biggest in the county that I I'm gonna say. Oh, are you oh. calling some? Are you calling I, people calling, out? Yeah, no, no. I'm, 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 <laughs> are I'm you just, trying to sort I'm of saying, friendly rivalry here? <laughs> I'm just saying we we have a really nice Christmas tree, so uh, we hope people come out and see that and it. It really brightens up the, our main street during I, this time I, of holiday. I tried to start a mayor bicycle rivalry. I know, right? But I don't know that that picked up any momentum. So maybe <laughs> we can get something with the big tree. Hey, yeah. we, we can go. We can try that one. That one's a little bit uh, probably easier to do than the actual uh, bike ride. Probably. <laughs> now, who who does the decorating of this tree? Well, that's the our public works and parks and rec. Uh, our parks guys uh, are going to be putting that together starting next week, uh, getting it ready for our tree light. So they'll be out there. Uh, putting that thing together, and, and it's a task, so uh, we appreciate their help. So, obviously, artificial tree. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Lou, I wanted to yeah, see you, you know, out there cutting down that tree. It's not like the Today <laughs> Show that we had a giant, you know. It's San Luis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, it, but uh, it's always, uh, every year we're trying to make it uh, a bigger and better event, and we hope people come out and, you know, free chocolate and well, Hot the, chocolate and cookies. cookies and the entertainment, Santa. seriously, with the Gadsden Elementary School District, the marching, the band. marching band, so talented. All right, and we are definitely looking forward to that. That's going to be the highlight of our, our ceremony, and uh, they're always, you know, the, they, they, they produce some great sounds and music, and so that's why we're having them this year. They do. They're phenomenal. Anytime anyone has the opportunity to see them perform, I highly recommend it. Yes. Ser definitely. Seriously, talent beyond the, 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 little, the little kids that they are. <laughs> So okay. they travel around the world. And that is on Tuesday, November 28th at 6 p.m. Yes. Now at Main Street, Roundabout at Main and D Street. You right. can't, yes, right I was going to say, that's, is that pretty easy to find? Yes, you can't miss it. It's mm. right on Highway 95, which turns on to Main Street oh, and okay. on the Roundabout. All so, right. So you, yeah, once you head down Main Street, it'll be right there. You can't All miss right. that tree. And they get, I, I love the, the graphics that you guys have. You're always on top of doing the, the nice little flyers and stuff. This can be found also at San Luis AZ Parks and Recreation on Facebook. You guys have a really active presence on social media, too, which I like. Well, thank you, and we're trying to get everybody. And this is our events, our community, uh, community events, but also uh, countywide events. So That's right. Like you everybody, in, come can, enjoy. I can hop in my car from here, drive on over there, which we might might be able to coordinate. Maybe. Try and work that out. Now, you also have the annual Holiday of Lights Parade coming up. Right. Uh, and this one, again, uh, you know, thanks to APS, and, and uh, we're, we're putting together our annual light parade again and uh, Holiday of Lights and, uh, you know, it's going to be this December 8th, uh, starting at, at 6.30, um, when it's nice and, nice and dark so everybody can see it. So we're inviting everyone. Uh, again, this is a, a, a community and county event. Uh, this is one day before uh, the Yule one, so we're thinking, hey, come in. <laughs> since, since you have the, the floats since you're decorated, decorated so, already. <laughs> so we want to invite everybody out there that's, uh, you know, and, and there's, uh, you know, Somerton also has a, a light parade. So... You know, um, we want to, I think it'd be a great opportunity for people that put this flow together. That they just do, don't use it for just one event, but they participate in all of them. So, Get your uh, use out of it. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we, we invite them to come and join us uh, um, for that, and, and then they can participate in the other ones. So. Are you still taking entries for the parade? Yes, uh, we're, we're taking entries up to that Thursday. So uh, yeah, they can go on online or call us at, at our office at 
you know, the 341-8535 or go to City of San Luis Parks and Rec uh, Facebook or, you know, so if they want any information, they can follow up with us and we'll be more than happy to send that information to them or registration form and they can they can send it back and they'll be ready to go. Very cool. I just don't know if we could drag our band that far. <laughs> uh, that is Slowly. <laughs> Slowly. It's really not that far, Jennifer, but it is. it might be a long couple of days for them to play yeah. too long it, parades. It would be. Yeah. <laughs> And we, we've got great prizes, you know, the best float, uh, we have a $200 uh, cash prize, the best group, another $200, and, and best individual, we'll give them $100 for their effort. So, uh, you know, hopefully that's an incentive to come out and, and sh show off their, their lights. Those are great prizes, too. Is there a theme of, for the parade? Really, it's uh, the more lights, the better. The more lights, the better. That's, <laughs> that's yeah, always a plus. That's, that's the best theme that we got. And it gets, there's a lot of creativity that comes mm -hmm. out, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've seen some great uh, floats and, and groups and individuals, you know, uh, putting on suits that are lit up or, or uh, just giant semis with lights. So, so uh, you know, the fire departments always do a great job. So uh, we're hoping, to, this is open to everyone. So we're hoping they come out to the city of San Luis and join us that night. All right. And next up, now this is last but certainly not least for the things we have on the the docket for today, Parks and Rec Department in San Luis is having a mega yard sale. Right, and, and this is something that, uh, this is our third annual, uh, and it's something we, we want to provide to the community. You know, uh, it's that time of year and maybe some extra money for the holidays. Uh, you know, you can come out, close. Uh, we're inviting individual businesses, uh, everyone to come out if they have something to sell. Uh, we don't allow any food. But any other type of merchandise uh, it, it, that they're selling, they're more than welcome. It's ten dollars for a ten by ten. Uh, they can get a bigger space. Uh, it'll be another additional ten dollars. But it's open to not just the uh, city residents, but everyone uh, around. So, and I, uh, Daniel was has participated in it in these last couple I of times. Have. So. Yes, I've participated twice already, and it was a great turnout. A lot of people showed up. I was able to clean out my closet, my garage, you know, get yeah. some clutter and make a few bucks. So it was a win-win. And it's open to individuals, organizations, and businesses. It's not Everyone. just limit, not just limited to just, just everyday people. Right, right. So this is this is an opportunity for those startups or or individuals that, like Danya said, want to clean out the. And so uh, it's a great time, and hopefully, like they get some monies for those uh, Christmas presents coming up. Some extra cash. <laughs> and that, always welcome. That is located at 965 North Park Avenue at Joe Ordunior Park, right, right in the middle of everything. Right in the corner of uh, Juan Sanchez and Main Street. Uh, you can't miss it. And it's a great way for a uh, great visual. Everybody's going to be stopping by and, and be able to see it. So it's a great opportunity to, to promote or, or sell your stuff. And it's actually in the Cultural Center parking lot. It's in the parking lot, yes. Yeah, so it's wow. out. All right, so if we want to make a little bit of cash, just 10 bucks gets you a 10 by 10 square. And if exactly. you don't have anything to sell, make your way that way to buy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, there's, <laughs> gonna lot, there's a lot of things. There, uh, you, who Furniture, knows? You clothes. You may find that special gift you need you for somebody. Know. You never well, know. Someone was asking me the other day, she has a home-based type of business with products she creates. And, and I know there's a variety of different things coming up, but I kind of drew a blank at that moment. So if it's you and you're watching or listening right now. <laughs> this is one of your opportunities. This is <laughs> definitely be worth it for you. Okay, if you're interested in getting a space there, you can call 341-8538 or email Lizette Varela at lvarela at cityofsanluis.org. Yeah. Good. All right. So. Lots of things going on out in San Luis. So, and and it's not just for the city of San Luis. You can everybody's welcome. Count everybody in Yuma County is welcome. So why not take a little trip? And it's not far. You know, fifteen twenty minutes, depending on uh, the way you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but definitely worth it. You know, the, like I said, we have the Christmas tree lighting. They have the um, holiday light parade and the mega. Uh, yard sale coming up. And again, even if you're in Yuma or Welton or Summerton, even Winter Haven, come on over come and, and on take over. in all these events. So many people get caught up in the hustle, hustle and bustle of the shopping and everything else. Well, take time and enjoy these family fun mm -hmm. events. Let a little less stress and a more more time together. Yeah, they, and then they can partic participate together too. So, uh, you know, we really want to get the families out there. Maybe uh, uh, families can put together a, a float or something. That to, to showcase uh, you know uh, their family and, and their holiday and their, spirit. Yeah, so uh, definitely something and 
And we want to just thank uh, both of you for having us on here and be able to to spread that information out to to South South County. It's our pleasure. A lot of great things taking place in the city of San Luis. All right, our guests today, Danya and Louis, thank you so much for coming in. We have to go out and take our Lotus Day Spot and Salon selfie. I didn't shave, so. <laughs> we'll, well now everybody knows on Facebook. Not just the radio, exactly. on Facebook Live. We'll be back with Today in Yuma right after this on Z93, Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com, and on Facebook Live. Don't forget, text the keyword FTS to enter to win that free oil change from FTS Automotive. We'll be back right after this. Oh. Huh? No, she's oh, like, yeah, oh, oh, I'm like, what? <laughs> Susan, how does she can remember that? Like, there's, a sign, there's signs everywhere. There's signs. Oh, no, I, ju- I just, it's all memorized. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. You say something enough. <laughs> Every single day. Yes. Yeah, someone thought we recorded our little, you know, spot. Oh, and just like, there's a like, no, they're not. They're just weekly, you know? All right. Here we go. All right. Smile. Oh, all right. Thank, thank you very much. See you guys next week. Next month. Yeah. Next month. All right. Next month. All righty. Take care. Uh, all right. Have a good one. Bye. Ooh. Is it all right? Uh, yeah. WTF? Yes. All righty. Good morning, Adrienne. Thank you, Wanda. Yes, Charlie. We love her, too. <laughs> yes. Thank you. You're welcome. I was like, what is she pointing to? <laughs> I kept looking back here. Boss is here. <gasps> we should go get him. We have a heading right after. Oh, you have a meeting? Because when I saw him pull up, I was like, what the? What the foodie? It's, what the? <gasps> what the foodie? <laughs> <laughs> flying Not facetious? Flying in balloons? No. <laughs> right? <clears throat> How excited I'm glad you're go. Me too. I'm so scared. Wear a jacket. A jacket. Not a sweater. A jacket. Do I, even, do I own a jacket? I hope so because it's going to be cold. Or layer. Yeah, just layer. layer. Because yeah, maybe I, I, I get your thermal yeah, underwear out. And I wore I wore a beanie and gloves and a scarf because it's You do know that I'm early. hot all the time, right? Thermal underwear? Who owns <laughs> that? It's cold up there. It's cold in the morning because you have to get there early. And then uh, being up there, it is. It's, it's so chilly. I may get to bring uh, my jean duster jacket to wear it. A what? A duster. Long and their jean has a furry collar. Um, I would... I would go something a little shorter. Yeah, because you have to climb in the basket. Oh, now I have to climb and fly in the air? Like hopping over the Hop, sides. It's just it. not like, it's only like this tall. Do you see how short my legs are? Maybe Do you see how round my body is? Just get you a step. Murphy says people in Yuma, what's a jacket? <laughs> <laughs> right? It's true, though. Mm. <laughs> is it the thing on the outside of a record? <laughs> Yes, that too. Then you're going to do that and people are like, oh, what's a record? What's a record? <laughs> people already are like, what's a CD? <laughs> That's funny. Are you rearranging over there? I gotta fly and climb. Fly and climb. Oh, you guys are making me we'll like do it the other way, though. Mount Everest. You guys are making this like Mount Everest. And then climb out. <laughs> Unless you want them to dump you out. Mm. Maybe they'll have a handsome I balloon guy and he can help me. Okay. Can you make sure that our balloon guy is handsome and muscly? Maybe uh, he could just no, help the me. Guy that we had last year was I think we muscly. get the same guy every time. He's he's but he's, he's, really a, nice. good, he's a great pilot. And he's so nice. good. Good to know. And his his wife? He's with his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Do they give you parachutes? Just no parachutes. That's why you need the jacket. Just in case. Oh, I can fly down. Okay, yeah. cool. Get Bring going. your squirrel jacket. You know your flying squirrel. I Welcome will. back to today and you. I'm Jennifer and I'm Teresa and I'm Anita. All right, and I'm going to stop you guys really <laughs> quick for just a second here, only because I received information that starting about 1130 last night, there were multiple different fires, I think, uh, four different fires in the north end that were taking place. Yuma Fire Department sent me out some information. At 1134, there was a fire reported near 9th Street and 1st Avenue. 
that was a vacant house at 964 North First Avenue. They took care of that. And then at 12.26 a.m., a trash bin was reported on fire at 4th Avenue and 10th Street. That was put out just after 2 a.m. There was another house fire at 357 West 4th Street. And then at 2.30, as the 4th Street fire was being extinguished, a fence was reported on fire at 735 South Orange, uh, now South Orange Avenue. That was also quickly extinguished before it could spread to other structures. But the fire department wants people to keep an eye out for any suspicious activity and please report it to 911 immediately. You can help prevent crimes and the quicker response time does save lives and property. So please keep an eye out. Someone out causing trouble. Benefit, you, know, you know, if you're at work all day and you have neighbors that are home, they're looking okay. out. And if you are, you know, know your neighbors and know the people that are supposed to be in your neighborhood and you see something, you know, sketchy, it's, I use um, the non-emergency number a lot. If we see somebody that is, looks like they're suspicious or shouldn't be in the neighborhood, we give them a call and they'll come out and investigate whether it's just somebody that is, you know, just really passing through or is in cases we've we've um, caught some people that were up to no good Mm -hmm. so definitely worth um, programming that number and again keep an eye out for you and your neighbors that's uh, that it all it all comes back today does today is national philanthropy day so it's I I didn't even notice that part before we were speaking with Leanne and talking about the other things about just you know giving the gift of your time but WTF Anita Oh, I don't know. How, I mean, how do I come on after all that amazing information? Well, um, we need to clarify what WTF is because it's not what the foodie. <laughs> no, no, it's not what the foodie. That, that was a that was, that was a precious yes. moment <laughs> during the Veterans Day parade, I have to say. That gave us all a very good laugh. But what's the formula? I think... Um, this feature's been on the air for a little while, and we've been talking about, you know, exactly what Leanne was talking about today, taking that the initiative to be that change that we want to, want to see in the world. And I do that by using different, different um, a culmination of acronyms. So let's, not only are we changing the face of the world, we're changing the face of our negative acronyms, because we don't want those around. No. We just want positive ones. And I actually have an acronym for Thanksgiving, because it's right around the corner. We're not going to be on next week, and... Um, I think that the holiday seasons, as joyful as they are, they become very stressful. Mm -hmm. And there are simple things that we can do to reduce the stress within our holiday situations. And so my acronym for Thanksgiving is THANKS. And T stands for Take Pride in Your Family. Uh, No matter who you have in your family, whether you have black sheep or um, the oddball or the redhead stepchild, which is what I like to call myself. I tend to be the redhead stepchild of my family. there's there's still reasons to take pride in the oddballs, and we're gonna. My house is gonna be full this Thanksgiving season. My, not only are we celebrating Thanksgiving, we're also celebrating my in-laws' fiftieth wedding anniversary. Congratulations! Which to them. is monumental. Yes. monumental. It's it, unfortunately it's something we don't see every day anymore. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. It, that is a true statement. But it, with that comes extra family that wouldn't typically be here. So. Um, I know going into this, there are a couple personalities that I have challenges with. I know this going into it. So I can go in with the dread of having to face these negative personalities, or I can be thankful and take pride that they are still part of our family. And even though there are challenges, there's still really good things about those individuals. So I want to make sure that I focus on that. Hope for the best, but plan for the worst. That's our H and thanks. Um, because again, we want to hope for the best, but what what can I what contingencies can I put into place to make the environment and fun? Anticipate something maybe not going the way you plan. Exactly. Um, a is abstain from negative thoughts and actions because it's real easy to react to the situation instead of just stepping back and go, you know what? Let's be the bigger person. It is what it is. It is Let's what it just is. Move forward. I can't change that person, but I can change my reaction to that person. So uh, abstain from those negative thoughts and actions. N, negotiate the challenging moments. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, um, again, taking the opportunity. I know in particular there's going to be one person that we're going to have challenges with, so I have to look at it. Okay, what are the things that I like about this person, and how can I negotiate around some negative? Because um, op- it's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. Um I'll come back to that in a second. And K, keep calm and family on. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's your family. And no matter what you what happens, they're always going to be your family. So just love and honor them. And then S, smile, because the smile makes a difference throughout whatever's happening. It, it does. does. It does. So and that's my acronym for thanks. Fantastic. Now we have a winner. 
We do. Um, our Bare Naked Zip Co. is the sponsor for WTF, and this week's winner of the $20 gift card for Bare Naked Zip Co. is Tiffany Bocamp. Congratulations, <laughs> yes. Tiffany. And you can be a winner. All you need to do is go to monstermediayuma.com, click on the WTF tab, and there Anita has a little entry form along with all of her wonderful um, WTF segments, but she also has an entry form to win, and she draws a winner every Thursday, or excuse me, Wednesday morning. That's <laughs> right. I keep thinking it's Thursday today. <laughs> all right, we want to thank you all for tuning in today. Thank you to retired Sergeant Leanne Wortham with the Yuma Police Department for yes. coming in, and Louis and Danya from the City of San Luis, and Anita with us. Yay. Yay. Are awesome. Thank you very much. We will see you all here bright and early tomorrow at 9 to 10 a.m. on Z93, <laughs> Outlaw Country, MonsterMediaYuma.com. And you can always watch us on Facebook Live. Watch for this segment later on YouTube. We're under Monster Media Yuma. If you'd like to watch us a little bit later that way. We will see you tomorrow. KCYK Yuma and KLJZ Yuma. Bye, ladies. All right. Thanks, Thanks. See you tomorrow. No problem. Bye. Bye.